Hi, welcome to DIY Anyone. I'm glad to have you today. This is Jim Bueller with you. And we have today a really cool um, upholstered chair that I got at a garage sale. And this project is for my granddaughter. And my, grand, my daughter in law picked the fabric that we used. And she was actually, my daughter in law was with me when we found this chair. So we were at a garage sale, and this guy was crazy. He was trying to sell a wheelbarrow full of wood scraps for six dollars and I wanted that wood because it was you know nicer wood and he wouldn't go down on that at all well then I saw this chair and I'm like well what do you want for this chair he says I hate that chair a dollar and I'm like fine it's yours or I mean it's mine I'm taking it here's your dollar so you can see that the fabric was all worn out but the actual body of the chair has some really pretty lines some pretty sculpting um, and is beautiful so I thought well he said it's never been comfortable so I sat in it and no it was not comfortable so I thought well maybe the the um, bottom of it needs to be retied you know the base and then new padding and we'll see so I set to taking the fabric off and the one thing you want to be really careful when you're doing this taking the staples out is that you don't use the wood itself as a pry bar because this kind of wood in particular was very soft and it would um, show the mark so when I got that off of there, you can see you want to save every piece. And this is what that actual pattern piece will look like for you. Then I looked to see, okay, how was this foam on here? It was kind of a neat piece of foam where they stapled it underneath the fat part of the foam. And this was actually okay. And I actually ended up just reusing that piece of foam because it was not disintegrated at all. Then I started pulling off the, the trim. And the trim, this particular trim is called GIMP and you can get it at Joann's or, or um, I think I got this online actually at Amazon, the one that I wanted, and uh, to replace it. So when you take it off, then measure as you take it off and then you'll have an idea of how much you're gonna need. And then again, go after these staples, but you wanna be careful that you don't dent that wood. And I think that's what I was realizing real quickly is that that was gonna dent that wood, even the angle I was doing the staples. So I got that piece off and then see all that gross yellow stuff? That was just the disintegrated foam inside the two pieces of fabric because the back is open. So it's like a pocket. And that was gross, so I was just showing you what that was. So then you pull off everything. Um, and then what I ended up doing is I pulled off the seat also. Now notice, this is the seat piece. And see those indentations there? What that is, is that's the area around the leg itself. Oh, sorry, Penny and Maverick decide to say hi. Um, anyway, we now have Porter and Ruthie living with us. That's my two grand dog, Durban Shepherd. So it's four dogs in the house. It's pretty fun around here. Anyway, um, so we, um, uh, you want to save that piece. And as you're, as you're pinning, you know, especially see where that fabric's torn. Be sure you don't, for example, pull it bigger than it needs to be. Just try and do really a really good job at, at holding it really um, in a neutral position and so you don't pull anything. But then again, like I say, you see where those pieces are, fold them out so you know exactly where that fabric's gonna need to go. Now here's the key though. You don't wanna cut around this because you do wanna leave yourself a little bit of what I would call a seam allowance. So, and I d definitely did not cut out those leg pieces like that. I cut like a slit and then uh, uh, two other little slits and because you have to be able to fold that fabric underneath where those arms go and you'll see me do that. Then I cut out the other pieces of fabric. Notice that it's a woven fabric. It doesn't have any pattern to it, but it does have a grain. So you wanna be sure that you're putting your pattern pieces all the same direction on the fabric, um, which would be lengthwise if you had a pattern piece. You don't wanna start with a kind of fabric that doesn't really have much body to it. Also, something that's heavier like this will show um, or won't show through the foam. If you, for example, don't get the foam cut exactly how you want it, it's much more forgiving. So I basically just cut these out big just to get them out of the way, and then I'll cut them down smaller when I need them. All right, so now you see my electric knife. I use it more for cutting foam than I do for cutting meat. So I actually um, got a new one for my kitchen and kept my old one for my foam. And you can see I'm trying to use my finger scissors, which is just dumb. So then I pick up my electric knife and go to town. So what you want to do first is I had already pulled off the piece of foam that was there. I didn't have footage of that for some reason. 
but I pulled off the old foam and what you see underneath there is just the chair decking with the springs and all that was intact. The other thing that I didn't say at the beginning that I want to say is as you take things apart, take a ton of pictures. Uh, for example, it, you're not going to remember exactly how that trim went around the, uh, no I'm not going to cut the cord of the um, electric knife, but it sure looked like it, didn't it? <laughs> anyway, um, take a lot of pictures because all the little curves and places that that trim has to go back, you may not remember. And so to have the pictures to refer to is really helpful. Also another good thing to do before you start reapplying your fabric is to give the chair a good wash and just really clean it up well. Make sure all that little, those little foam pieces and that little gritty stuff is all gone. All right, so I'm pushing at the front of the chair here to get just the borders. And you can see where I've cut around the, where the, um, uh, the handles of the chair are and the back of the chair are. <laughs> and I did start this in August, that's why, or July, excuse me. We got the chair in July and I started this in August and I literally just finished it. It wasn't one of my projects that I was able to finish quickly because I couldn't find the right stinking glue to put the gimp back on. I had probably eight samples of glue and I ended up using a, uh, like a, a heavy industrial type glue that I found at um, Joann's and it actually says industrial fabric um, glue. All right, so then I drew around the, the back of the chair and this is the idea of what I'm gonna just cut out. Sorry, a lot of this is out of the frame, but you'll see what I'm doing here. And this gave me the, the piece for the back. Now, what I realized was that back foam, uh, or the foam that went in the back of the chair had very little padding in it. So this um, inch, that's what, inch, and a, that's almost a two inch pad. I had to really, really sculpt it down so that it would fit inside of there and not um, look, look bulky. And so that took quite a bit of time to cut that down, but then you'll see that when I place that in there that I was able to do that. All right, now notice how it has that white area on the very inside. That area is meant to hold two sets of staples. So first you'll notice that I'm putting the back part in. Please don't make the mistake of putting that in backwards because you want the wrong side in because you want the right side to the back. Then you can see where I sculpted this um, foam and it's cut down quite a bit and the nice thing is now if this was a really thin fabric like that white fabric that I had on that chair all that would show and it wouldn't look good so that's where the the, the heavy woven fabric really gives you um, the forgiveness the other thing about this too is I ended up using a pneumatic stapler that went hooked onto our compressor because a regular hand stapler just was not able to do the job probably if I had a um, a stronger one or something I don't know one that was meant to do that would have worked better but it, I had to use a pneumatic one to make it go in this wood and not have it be all junked up with the staples all right so now what I'm doing is laying that piece around just to get and get the fit and make sure I have enough on the top and enough on the bottom and then I'm just gonna tuck that in and make sure that it's sitting smooth along that edge and then there goes my first staple now um, you do want to, with doing fabric like this, you do want to put the staples really close together. Uh, in this sort of thing, when you got the foam, I did the top, bottom, side, side, and then I went back and did the curves. And then if there's ever a staple that doesn't sit right, just pull it out because it's not going to look right. And I'm oh, sorry about the blurriness. I don't know what happened there. There we go. Anyway, it's not going to sit right and it will um, um, give you troubles. So get your pliers and pull it out. And again, pull up and away from the chair so you don't dent the wood while you're putting it in, while you're taking that staple out. Because that will tick you off if you make a dent like that. I made a couple little dents, but fortunately you don't really see where they are. All right, so now we're folding that along. Again, make that smooth, fold it down underneath, and then when you get to those curves, you can work the curves in. Fold it where you want it and you're just going to do a staple at a time you know you can look at that and go oh no it's not going to fit it actually will fit it'll do great you just have to again a staple at a time a little at a time and work it as you go <laughs> also too i had this up on a pretty good it was a waist level table um, because otherwise it'll kill your back and i have enough back issues as it is to not wreck something now 
taking a pair of scissors like this, boy, cut slowly and carefully because if you cut too much, as you can well imagine, you can't add it back on. So that's where, um, just be cautious when you do that. Cut a little bit, cut a little bit, cut a little bit. And I tuck the top layer underneath that foam just so that it'll make a nice smooth edge too as well. You probably already caught that, but just to make sure you saw that. See that pretty flower design on the top of that? This is just gonna be so gorgeous in my daughter, uh, my granddaughter Waverly's um, uh, bedroom. It's gonna be so pretty. Now, I had taken those pieces off, so all I'm showing you here is I'm just gonna re-staple this exact piece back on. And so I'm just stapling the two pieces underneath how it was held. And then like say fortunately, because I think that piece of foam would have been probably a pain in the butt to replace and to get back so it had been smooth. So, um, you know, anything you can reuse, reuse. Well, you know, you don't have to do everything new. It's just that the, um, the seat and the back of that chair foam had literally just disintegrated into nothing. And if it's nice outside, it's a good thing to take it apart outside so you don't have the mess inside to clean out. It's a whole lot easier just to let it go into the grass. <laughs> All right, look how nice that back looks. Isn't that pretty? So then what we'll do is then we'll be putting the gimp on there and um, uh, you're going to glue that gimp so it covers the staples and just barely goes over the, the edge of that, of that wood. Just like the gimp has little loops in it. And just so the tiny little bit of that loop goes over it is what you're going to want to do. <laughs> Alright, so once this is stapled back on, then we're going to put this, the sides on. Now, this was a little more difficult to cut the extra fabric away. Now notice that, bit, that little piece I folded underneath. That's what the pattern was that came off that chair and I'm holding it in place. So first staple that edge and the gimp is going to go all the way around the border of that whole, whole arm. And so hold down the center and I'm right there at the edge and then be careful you don't over hold it. And I've already looked at the inside so I know that that matches okay. That I'm not short on, on uh, fabric. And you do want that to have just a little bit of a bump so it's comfortable on the arm. Now, so that little bit that you folded under, that's just, they, they couldn't have a raw edge right at the top of where the armchair, the chair, sorry, the arm of the chair was. So um, that's why they folded that bit down. And then I'll be stapling the inside of it. And again, move the chair so it's easy for you. Don't, don't move your body in funky, wild positions. Move the chair so it works for you. Then I ended up using I got a uh, roller cutter from Dollar Tree and those little weird uh, piece, that piece hanging down there that need to be trimmed away, that was hard to do with my scissors. And you have to be careful when you've got a woven fabric, you don't want to pull one thread weird and cause it to fray. And that I, ha I was almost in trouble doing that. So I ended up using the um, roller cutter from Dollar Tree, figured, yeah, buck, I'll take the risk. I'm not sure why that's back in there, sorry. Oh, I know why, because I ended up putting two layers of foam on there. Because it could actually handle the both layers to make it more comfortable. All right, now hold the front down and see where the fabric is gonna go. That's what I'm showing you there, is the front border where that those staples will go. That's the beauty, is you have the, that ability to watch the staples. Now see how that leg is like that? I probably should have covered that with foam where that leg came up, but I didn't look back at my pictures so I had cut it away. So that's why you take lots of pictures. Oh, and oh, by the way, when you take the pictures, you should look at them too. Now notice that little V cut that are like a Y shape I cut in there. So that's all you wanna do when you start is just those two little cuts. You don't cut anything away in, when you're going around a corner like that. Leave yourself plenty of fabric because you can always cut it a little deeper. So then you're folding it underneath and then I'm holding it down and then you see you have the nice part of the arm the chair of the arm sorry the arm of the chair there lord and you want to make that fabric so it's smooth because once it's stapled once it's down you're done so hold it in place and pull on it to get it where you like it and to where it looks smooth and looks good to your eye then if you have to go back I believe at one of these here I'm going to be cutting cutting back at it a little bit because it was a little tight in the in the corner but see how beautifully that goes around the edge? And notice, this is no sewing. You know, I'm a big sewer. I've sewn for since I was a tiny kid. Okay, that's where I'm showing you that I'm gonna cut away 
at that just so little tiny 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 cuts sorry my camera guy didn't catch that <laughs> um but tiny cuts because last thing you want is a big hole in, in your new chair tuck it down in around the foam and I had sculpted the front of that foam probably more than I showed you now maybe I didn't I think it was just the top I had to do that with all right, so that all got stapled on. I lost the footage to that. I think it's because it took me so many months to get this chair done. But there's the gimp, and you can see where I'm just glued it around. And just like I say, it will set flat. Well, that's why you want to use something like that, is because it will go beautifully around the corners and it'll set flat. And here's the final shots of just how pretty this chair turned out. And it's not my first upholstery, but it's my first upholstery job that I haven't had to sew anything. So I like this. I'm going to be doing more of this sort of thing. And if you see a chair at, the, at a garage sale this summer, man, grab it because it was a buck. What have you got to lose? And I think I spent about $35 on the fabric. So um, I can promise you that a chair like this would have cost a whole lot more. So enjoy this. Come on, do it. You can do it. Take a chance at it and please come back and visit me again. I'd love it if you'd subscribe and ring that bell because that's how my channel will grow. And I sure appreciate any comments that you leave as well to let you know let me know what you think. Have a great day. Bye guys.